Hello, my name is Elisa Yanacone and welcome to my masterclass. I'm a cinematographer and photographer and sometimes I work within the realm of music videos. I'm all about humans. I believe in building bridges and I think it's really important to find connectors. The medium of filmmaking is one that allows you to build those bridges, to create empathy between cultures that perhaps wouldn't get along otherwise. I wanted projects with meaning, generally with a social justice messaging, but I wanted to use the kind of creative, magical realism, if you call it, um, kind of dramatics of theatricals that you can create with filmmaking um, to pull kind of these two things together to make them more accessible and not make them just part of a new cycle that disappears in, in five minutes. I love the music video genre because it's the one where you can really let your imagination fly. There's really no restriction as to where you want to take things, how you want to tell that story. The first thing that I think about when I hear a song to make a music video is the feeling that it gives me. It's not so much the lyrics, it's just what am I feeling? Am I feeling upbeat? Am I feeling like I want to just chill out? And then getting to the heart of the music video in the same way that an actor would get to a heart of a scene. Color for me is the most exciting part of the process. And I love walking into a fabric shop and looking at the ways in which fabrics reflect colors, absorb colors, you know, if you work with the velvets, they're very absorbent. If you work with shears, you know, how the light kind of goes across them and how you can basically use that as your paintbrush. And if you're dealing with complex issues or complex human conditions, you know, sometimes textures can tell a lot of that. In the meantime, I'm just kind of trying to digest all of these images and all of these different styles until I kind of go, ah, and that sparks an idea. And then obviously comes the logistics of production because a lot of these ideas, you know, when you bring in magic to things, you know, you want to wrap planes in fabric, you want to do crazy things, you need to find someone that's going to be okay with you doing that. <laughs> um, so then comes the kind of logistical mess of trying to find all the people that come on board for the idea. And that can take a bit of time. There are really two types of shoots, I think, that can happen in music videos. One is where you have chronometric precision. Everything's been storyboarded, you get to a set, you know exactly where everything's going, maybe you're shooting with symmetry, the shots, you know, it's gotta be exactly as you envisioned it, and storyboarding is massively important. Then you have other shoots, like the one that I just did, um, where you can't plan in that way. You have a general idea of what you want to get, you've conveyed that to people, and you're just gonna all pull together to try and get something out. Obviously the easiest way to shoot a music video is to have the track and then play that and then have people singing at the pace. You want people to be on the same key, on the same beat. Sometimes it is not always entirely possible, which is what happened to me, but you know, when you're working in challenging environments, this is what sometimes happens. I worked with the C70 and the R5C for this project. It was just about trying to be able to capture little moments and have that gear with me at all times and make people feel comfortable. One of my favorite things on the C70 and the R5C is um, false colors. When I'm not building up the camera, right? I'm not putting a massive monitor, I'm not having a director's monitor, this kind of stuff. False colors are your best friend. That and the histogram. <laughs> but between those, you can really, really just expose properly. In a camera like that with 16 stops latitude and hardly any noise in the blacks, right? You're gonna be able to do great things in post. Having NDs in your camera is a complete game changer. I love the fact that I can just play up and down, you know, with my NDs at my fingertip in a cinema camera. That's fantastic. Then also focus tracking. Once again, you know, in this particular project, I shot basically most things handheld or with a monopod and you know, that suddenly means that you need to A, track, B, stabilize. And so having the possibility of, on both cameras, you know, image stabilization, if you use RF lenses to stabilize on the lens, right? Or to stabilize also on the camera, I mean, these are all things that help you. I also think being able to play with frame rates, you know, sometimes you want to go to slow motion, there's a beautiful moment that you want to capture in that way. And having the C70 able to do 124K, at basically a click of a finger is incredibly practical. 
I love working wide and close, and I know that sometimes people are scared of distortion, but I love the fact that you can get close to someone and still be with their emotion, be with their feeling, but kind of get a sense of their environment. I think you can do wonderful things with very wide lenses. You just want to make sure that you have an idea of how to get maximum visibility when you launch. Maybe tie it into an event that's happening, that's relating to the content in the song, and then release it at the same time. Tie it in with some concerts that the band is giving, and voila, you've got kind of a strategy, right? It's about you and the artists being on the same page as to when you want to release based on something meaningful, something relevant that's going to give it visibility, and then, you know, you build it backwards. Having something like the R5C can be very convenient because you can shoot stills and video at the same time. And if you want to get a few stills already from what you're shooting and you want to put them on social media in the lead up, that's a great way to build some momentum. In other instances, you might just shoot a, a little behind the scenes or you know, a shot of somebody shooting or a shot of something random that happened on set and then you can release that as a little social media clip and people go, oh, that's curious, what's that about? I mean, we are in the age of social media, whether we like it or not. Whatever side of the game you're on, it's here. So definitely working with that. And if you can get a few people on board that you know, have massive following, that's always something you want to consider. Filmmaking and music videos in the end are about teamwork and collaboration, right? So when you have an artist that's bearing their soul with a song, right? You want to make sure that you are true to what their vision is as well as yours and you can collaborate together to bring that out. That requires a lot of discussions, trying to understand also what they meant to say, what they meant to put out with that song, and making sure that you have those mood board conversations. I think it's very important to be open to being wrong. And it's not till we actually kind of question why we're making these choices through someone else that's got a different opinion. That's when the best art can come out. But it's that process of creation that I think is probably the most important to make any kind of music video. I think for me, magical realism is a way to take something real, something generally that will carry some form of darkness, some shadow, some pain, right? And then use that magic to kind of transform it and tell that story a little bit differently. And in that way, it kind of mirrors cinematography in life, right? Cinematography is made out of light and shadows and so is life, right? And so if you can use your craft to emulate what's happening in real life, I think that's a major win. I like customizing buttons on the C70 and I tend to put false colors at number seven. Basically what you want to do is you want to stay away from red, which is completely overexposed, or hot pink, which is absolutely no bueno. You're never going to be able to pull that out in post. If you want to take full advantage of working with a lens like a 1.2, you want to make sure that you're using all of that depth of field. But if you open it up all the way, then you might be clipping. This is why having drop down NDs right at the tip of your fingertips is fantastic because you just bring them down and then you can still have that wonderful effect. When you're shooting a music video and you want to bring out that color, that vibrancy, that richness in post, to do that, I love to shoot C-Log 2 because in that way I get 16 stops of dynamic range and the most versatility with my footage. It's really important also when you're shooting a music video to tell the camera what you want it to do in terms of focus. Is it supposed to be looking for who to focus on itself or do you want to direct it? And playing with the modes and making sure that you set it in the one that works for you and your shooting style is really important. One of the things I really like when I'm shooting is to have a strap. You can put your camera down, still have it with you in case something amazing happens, but you have a chance to chat to people, to maybe arrange some of the fabrics, do whatever you need to do, and the camera is always with you. 